Hello everyone, it's Felicia Johnson. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, check out my first interview because we are talking all things physical therapy. And as you all know, my daughter has Pfeiffer syndrome and our village does not just include myself and my husband, but we have, nerve, nerve, ooh, we have nurses and therapists. And today I'm interviewing Erin Kiniston. She is our physical therapy. She's everything for us. And she's been part of Callie's team since we've been home. So the first interview was all about neonatal and in the hospital therapy. And now we're talking about what it looks like when you get home. And when I learned early on that our program is called Birth to Three, but it's early intervention. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's just hop in. Thanks for joining us. Erin, thanks for joining me. We, quick story, we got the chance to meet for the first time in person just this past week, but we've been vibing via Zoom and we'll get into what that looks like, but it's been so, it was so great to see you in person. I wanted to hug you, I'm such a hugger, but I was like, control yourself, Felicia, you got this. And I was like, hi. It's, just, <laughs> it's like, even though we're in person, it just also seems so impersonal because like, you just can't have that connection. But again, thank you for joining me and let everyone know a little bit about yourself, like how you got involved with kindering and how like you got into this, this industry, this job. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on and giving me the opportunity to talk about all things early intervention. Um, and same, I, this is so hard for me because I'm a hugger and like, a, you know, it's just, so physical, and so it's so hard not to be able to be like, Hey, so, <laughs> same. um, yeah, so I actually, um, became interested in physical therapy when I was a kid. Um, I, to volunteer uh, with my grandmother at a pro bono health clinic for children um, who didn't have access to medical care. Okay. And one day I just happened to hang out with the physical therapist <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, and it's what really started me on that track. And then once I went through PT school, I just knew um, that because I'm fascinated slash obsessed with the brain, um, that it was just that's where my passion was and just really what I wanted to do um, was work with children um, and early intervention for me was something that um, I didn't initially think that that's what I would do I thought I would work with kids of all ages um, but really for me that critical window the birth to three window um, for children in the development stages um, it's just for me where all the magic happens and it's just so, um, yeah, it's just one of the things that just like, one of the best parts of, of what I do. And so um, kindering was everything that I was looking for um, as an organization and just the ability to, to work within that, within that age range. Yeah, um, and I can tell, I can tell you're so passionate about your work and like just the families you work with because we feel that and I feel like going through the first year so Callie's 13 months and being in the hospital you know now being home we've interacted with so many individuals in the healthcare world and you can tell those who love what they do the energy they bring into the room and you just exude that even via zoom and just it was just so great to have you in person but even like your follow-up so we'll get into that guys but like the follow-up you give us, how detailed it is, the pictures. It's like, she wants my baby to hit that next step, to thrive. And that is what gets Callie to the next step, the milestones. And so I appreciate that. And we feel it here. But also you spoke about birth to three. And that's so key. Before I got into, before Callie was born, you know, you hear about like your child's brain and how it just soaks up so much and how it grows so much in those first few years. And I don't think I knew too much about the brain until really her, um, until she got diagnosed with Pfeiffer syndrome because they talk about craniosynostosis and how we gotta give her brain space and room to grow because it's gonna do most of its growing in the first two years. And so I thought about, okay, not just growing, but also just being activated and learning and soaking up so much. And so those are so key. So everyone, I'll share a little bit about our experience. So you saw that we were in the hospital, we had physical therapy there. And then once we got home, um, our social worker reached out and said, you now have the opportunity to work with 
a therapist in your home or via Zoom due to A, her syndrome, and then B, her long stay in the hospital. There's just going to be those things that she's going to have a setback in mobility wise that she would not, have, she couldn't get because she wasn't home. So I was like, okay, that's great. And then as I started to do some research, we got connected with Kindering because it's close to our home. And we did a whole assessment. And that assessment was about three hours. And we went through, I have a little paperwork here, but like, you guys, we went through cognitive, expressive communication. And Aaron was on that first call and receptive communication, um, physical, fine motor. Actually, you weren't on the call. You were on the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. physical gross yeah. motor like we went through everything and I think that's when I really you can get overwhelmed I will say at first you have the social emotional vision hearing and we're just they're asking us questions and wanting to see Cali play but via zoom you know so I'm holding the iPad and I'm trying to see like today will she be on the spotlight and perform you know <laughs> they're like okay will she reach for an object does she follow with her vision and after the three hours, we got this great paper and it kind of gave us a rating of here's where she is on this spectrum. And then here's what we feel like she could use support on. And so because she has a trach, because um, of her mobility and her elbows, we felt that physical therapy was key as well as speech and language therapy. And so those are the two opportunities that we have. And so Erin is our physical therapist and that's mainly what we work on is how do we get Callie moving how do we get her walking crawling all of those things and then we have another therapist who's all about how do we get her eating and, and vocalizing and then we have ASL so for all you parents there's a lot of different um, realms of therapy but today we're going to focus on physical therapy so from your perspective um, when you get I think we got assigned you because of like just was it schedule or because of your expertise I'm always curious because we get this packet and then they say, you've been assigned with Aaron, and then we just move forward. So on your end, what does that look like? Yeah, that's, and thank you so much for sharing your perspective. It's always so helpful for us as providers to hear and, and to take into account all of those things. Um, and even just hearing that, that, yeah, you get this paperwork and here's your provider. And, you know, it's kind of a missing piece of like, Okay, um, so it's really good for us to know and something to, to think about. Um, the way it works on our end, so the developmental evaluations, um, you know, Kindering provides at no cost to families um, in order to provide access and even expand access to make sure all kids, you know, within our geographical area um, have access to these services. Um, and so, the once the evaluation is done, which like you said, it's you know, so it was my colleague Molly was another physical Excellent. yes, um, who did it, and she just of course fell in love with you guys immediately too. Um, <laughs> it was so, great. They were, and I will say they, they were both great. It just you know it's so yeah. new for us. Like I didn't really know what we were going to be doing, and yeah. I was trying. To, there would be moments where Callie would do it. You know, she would reach for a toy, and there'd be moments where I was trying to explain to him, here's what she can do. We've seen her do this. I didn't, but yeah, yeah, it was really interesting to see kind of what all goes into that assessment. Yeah, and I I love that too, is that feedback of, you know, is she going to do it in this tiny little window that I have to have you see her and we're on Zoom and all these other extra layers, you know, even when the evaluations are in person, it's still just a snippet. And so for kindering and early intervention in particular, we rely heavily on parent reporting and caregiver input because you are seeing her every day throughout the day in different settings, in different situations. Um, so, you know, that's that's a nice way to look at it too, is that you play, you know, the parent and caregiver plays just as an important role in that evaluation. I love that you said that because I one of those parents that records everything and I You're didn't think so I was gonna be that. <laughs> You know, like I have friends are like, oh, you want to see my baby do this, this? And I'm like, oh my goodness, am I going to be that parent? And I so am. And Rome's always like, oh, they don't want to see all that. And I'm like, oh, they do. And so that yeah, you're do. saying, like you're giving me the green light. Like we want you to core. We want you to show your baby off because we yes. only get a window and there's so much yeah. more she does outside that window. Yeah. And even therapy itself, right? Like that's just an hour. And I'm 
where I'm like, let's keep doing more stuff and more stuff and more stuff, but it's still an hour. And so I love that you're like, oh my gosh, let me show you this video. Like, this is what it looked like and what we were doing, you know, maybe even in another room and with different objects in there. And then that's just such useful information for me to say, okay, so I see something that maybe I wouldn't have seen today because she's a little bit extra tired or, you know, she's had other stuff happening through the day. Um, and I get that valuable. So yeah, I'm giving you very much the green light to keep recording and keep sharing. Yes. <laughs> Um, so, and sorry, to give back to, so when the evaluation is complete, that's where the kind of team building progress or process begins for Kindering. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things is to look to see which campus is most convenient geographically, like for the family. Okay. Um, so we have, you know, the Renton campus, which is where I'm at and where you guys um, are being served. And then there's Bellevue and Redmond and Bothell. Um, so really spread out. So that's kind of the first thing is to look to see what's most convenient for them. Thinking one, that it's um, a good match for provider distance wise for driving since we're going to all these homes. Well, we were and will be again soon. Yes. Um, and then it's looking at what are the needs for the child and for the family? And is there anything that is really specialized or something really specific? Um, like you mentioned that the services for feeding that she receives um, are something that are in that category. And so then they would look to see, okay, do we have anybody in this area or at this campus with that? And if they don't, that's where they start to look, okay, we're going to have to bring somebody else in from a different campus because the child really needs this extra level of support mm -hmm. and it's more, and then they'll kind of adjust based on that. Um, and we have therapists, even just within like just the physical therapist, we all kind of have things that usually start from our own general interests and then kind of develop into a focus. And so we have like, Molly is somebody who's very, very highly specialized and skilled in orthotics. And she actually runs mm -hmm. a clinic for our families once a month um, for fittings and assessments. Um, we have another therapist who really specializes in visual, um, you know, service therapy. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of the, the trajectory and then um, we're paired up. But I, I love hearing your feedback that, that that's kind of missing from the communication side of it is that it's kind of like, okay, here's your provider and you're left. That sounds, you know, that sounds daunting. Like you said, it's already overwhelming. So, right. And then that's good to know. So I, I, I have a, a assumption like of what your specialty is, but what, it, what would you say it is? Well, so for me, um, I don't feel like I have any one particular thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've got like, I'm one of those people who's interested in everything and I probably should kind of like start to pare it down. <laughs> um, but for me, it's just my, my main thing is um, particularly for kiddos who have, you know, structural and anatomical um, limitations is that high level problem solving of how are we going to get these skills in these completely non-typical, non-traditional, um, maybe a little bit kind of trial and error, but, you know, always research back. But um, that's really for me where, where my passion is in helping families as they're now beginning these completely unexpected journeys and helping them to build the confidence in, you know, in their own skills as being, you know, therapist on top of, you know, parent or caregiver. Um, yeah. So that's what I was, I, I was going to say mechanics. I feel like you're really good at kind of breaking down the body and understanding like what goes with what and adapt equipment. So I feel like that is kind of what I felt like it's been so nice because, you know, what we figured out this week is like, Callie's got a very strong trunk or lower body like legs but the upper body is just not in unison right now and so how do we kind of separate the two and do exercises that focus on these limbs and then focus on that and then bring it all together and just the mechanics and so I'm a former track athlete and so I just understand the body and how it moves and so I feel like we click on that and I'm always so excited when we have our sessions because I, like, I always go away with something that I can take Callie through that I've done before but we'll rewind a little bit because so then we get assigned and mm -hmm. I want to share with everyone that, you know, the families can be hands on. And I love that Kinderine allowed me to kind of say, what are your goals for Callie? 
let's hear what your goals are. Let's talk about what Aaron and Cindy feel like the goals are that they have for her. And let's come in the middle and come up with a plan. Here's what we're going to work on for the next six months. And in that goal, there could be a lot of different steps to it, but this is the overarching like focus we have. And I'm, I'm very big on that. Cause I think right now in this world, like there's a lot being thrown at you when you're a medical parent and you know, we're not the only ones that we're working together. We're working with ASL and speech. And so to have that one focus of our goal is to get her moving. I want her at first, it's like, I want her to independently sit. How do we do exercises to get her to that? And so on your end, how was that feeling? Like, do you write down some goals after just seeing the assessment and say, here's what I think will be good for her. Now let's talk to the family and kind of come together. Yes. You have like the best questions ever. Um, you set that up perfectly for me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is almost exactly the process for providers is if you didn't happen to be part of the evaluation team, we have so many evaluation teams in order to families with so many different options of days and times. Um, so if you happen to, like in this specific case, I wasn't on the evaluation team. So I look at the evaluation report, which is, you know, just you, as you, See, it's just like beautifully detailed. So I'm kind of looking pages on pages. And it's yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, it's um, long. So I'll go in, I will look at the evaluation report. I will look at, um, and this is what all providers do. We look at the, even the reporting that you provided before the evaluation, that intake report, the kind of very information you provided. Because again, that is such a valuable tool for us to see, okay, what are you seeing? What did the evaluation team see? And look at the, um, you know, the, all of the excellent, you know, records we got from you from all of her medical history. And so I kind of look at, okay, what happened? What did they do at Children's? What was successful for them? What are they, um, to just give myself the best, you know, kind of broadest perspective I have. And then that helps me to start to build, you know, some things I would anticipate. And then, like you said, it's such a, an awesome process of having families and providers work together and caregivers give input to be able to say, okay, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to make this happen? And getting to have that first session, especially if you weren't part of the evaluation is just like magical because now you're getting to see, you know, everything that everyone's reported on and maybe things a little bit differently, again, because maybe your specific lens is looking at things more specifically, or you might be, you know, kind of looking at things differently. And so um, I think after that initial um, meeting where the, the parents and the provider that's been assigned come together with the FRC to, to make the service plan and make that overall um, outcome is where it's kind of solidified. And like you said, bring in what I'm thinking and kind of my clinical stuff and, and after reading all of the information and then take what not only, you know, you're seeing, but you're feeling and also what works best and what's your family's specific goal. Like, what yeah. do you want? Not what should you or, you know, what have you, but what's important for you and that really guides where we, where we go. Yeah. And I like that you talked about like, what's important for you. And we're going to talk a little bit about like our family, but knowing that every family is different and you all have, you know, your, your life schedule, work schedule, and all kind of dictates how you work with your child and how the um, sessions go. And earlier on, you know, we were meeting via Zoom once a week and we had got to a point where we realized that, you know, me and Rome are very hands-on. We've got some great nurses who are also implementing what you're telling us in the exercises and the homework. So then we backed off to every other week. And because we were looking at Callie and seeing that maybe she needed a little bit more time to kind of take in one of your sessions and let's, let us work on that. But also when we first got home, she just had so many doctor's appointments, so many calls. I was trying to get back to work and our schedules got a little crazy and I wanted to be so hands-on that I had to step back and say, what's the best for Callie? And what that was, was moving to every other week and also for me, letting go of some of the control and hanging over to my nurses and saying like, here's what we're going to do. So we create a plan, not just with Aaron, but also with our staff saying, okay, you know, we really want Callie to sit independently. That was our focus for the first six months. And with that being said, we need to do these exercises. I think we were, you know, sitting on like a cushion and 
also getting her core activated and understanding what toys motivate her. And so we would talk about it as a team and say, you know, our day nurses, this is what we're going to work on. And it allowed me to feel like, okay, we got this and we're making that momentum and moving forward. And I appreciate that, that flexibility, because I know it's hard on every family. It's a little different. So share with me, um, I know during the pandemic, things are so different, but like what has changed for you in the online setting of working with families versus in the in-person? Because online, you know, Zoom is all I know until you came this week. And so, you know, you're just trying to go with the flow. We're all trying to figure things out. And I would just say like, you know, for the families out there, like communicate and speak up when you feel like, you know, it's a little too much. Cause I think I had a, a little bit of a guilt trip of, for me of like, oh my goodness, am I taking away something from Cali by moving to every other week? And I went through that because I just thought, I kind of, I think all parents do, but like you just, everyone talks about milestones. What you see on Instagram is like, you get the monthly pictures of here's my daughter at three months and here's what they're doing. And so for me, it was like seeing a family, a daughter, someone, my friend's child at six months and here's what they were doing, sitting independently eating. You know, and I was excited about Callie seeing that for two seconds and, you know, putting a spoon to her mouth, but maybe not swallowing. And so I had to take a step back. And, and then I felt like if I removed a session, then maybe I was slowing her momentum down. So I know I just asked a lot of questions at once, but like <laughs> from your perspective, you know, what has that been the challenge of, you know, pandemic sessions versus um, in person and then like just dealing with families and milestones and having to deal with the coping of that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh gosh. I think we all have our like 2020, like what is happening? <laughs> but, right. <laughs> um, you know, it's something that I feel very fortunate again to be with an organization like Kindering because they actually began telointervention as an option in 2019 oh, for wow, okay. organizing. Yeah, and gosh, so ahead of the curve there um, because we go into families' homes because we treat in natural environment and for most children, it's in the home. And so because we could potentially be in, you know, six, seven homes in a day. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just knowing that either we, you know, let's say we feel a little bit off, not too sick, you know, but we're kind of like, I might be getting a cold. And now I'm going to be going to all these homes or someone in one of these seven or eight homes might have a sibling who isn't feeling well, might have a parent or caregiver who isn't feeling well. And so they really thought outside of the box of how can we offer something that we're not really sure how this works yet, but could we offer something that would provide either families and caregivers or the providers the option to still have a session and get that in if it's absolutely you know, vital to have that session that day, but give someone the ability to still have it, but not spread any germs. And so mm. when this hit, it was like, I would, full disclosure was not, it was something that I offered in the beginning. I would say, hey, do you want to try Zoom? So we have it as an option in case anything happens. But, you know, it wasn't used anything like it is yeah. now, but it was already set. So we just did all Zoom. We were very, very fortunate. And in fact, we're in a position to then help other organizations in the state. And we actually had kindering providers doing trainings for other therapists to help them with strategy, how to make zoom work how to how to figure out because for every discipline it's so different it's so different from you know a pt or an ot or a speech right. or an educator um it's it's just the experience is so different so very fortunate and and really you know again just kindering <laughs> <laughs> but that being said yes it's completely different and especially as a physical therapist who again full disclosure i'm you know i, I love just hands on so I can well, I saw this week the difference we get because like you were able to feel her joints and yep. see some things that you just can't do we couldn't get the right angle and I was like oh my goodness wow like I didn't I thought it would be better but I didn't realize how much you were be able how much information you would be able to receive just from yeah. those like 20 minutes that you were kind of like assessing via your hands like range of motion yeah. it's like oh wow yeah which again I think Given all the the challenges that you know transitioning to a hundred percent Zoom, you know, 
or presented us with, it also presented us for these huge moments of, of growth in our professional development, right? It's to say that this is how we have to make it work for our safety right now. And so it really talks about me. Yeah. yeah, I have some gaps in that I need to really figure out, okay, how do I coach that part of the treatment? Like, how do I help parents and caregivers be able to feel and describe and, you know, how, how are they processing what that, you know, feels like and how, you know, again, each parent, each caregiver is going to, is going to be different. And we might have different ways to get that information or, or find a way to help them to feel more confident in their skills. So I think for all the challenges it presented and that we couldn't be hands-on and we couldn't be there to kind of trial and error, and then have a parent or caregiver jump in and try it and feel confident. It was just, I'm going to talk you through it and help you, you know, try and do it. And I can watch everything that's happening and kind of make a tweak and kind of wonder through like, gosh, I wonder if we switch it up a little bit this way, or what if we add something like this? You guys are amazing because you have like the perfect things already in your home. I'm like, let's grab that and let's just have her do this. And everyone's yeah. always to go like, it's just, yeah. Amazing. I think questions about that from families of like, oh, or do you have to buy items and equipment for your sessions? And I explained mm -hmm. to them, like, we use what we have in our home. And you might say, oh, I think this would really be good if you had, you know, I think Callie was in the bouncer. And we were mm -hmm. looking at the way she was like bouncing and she was on her toes and not using her full foot to push into the ground and come up. And you said, I think it's just a little bit too high for her but it was the lowest level. And so, you know, do you have anything that we can put underneath it? And so we kind of problem solved together. I think I went and grabbed like, um, like a pillow or something and that was too soft. And then you were like, if you had to mean foam and I have a gym in the garage. And so I went and grabbed like a little mat and it was just perfect to give her the stability to push into the ground and push up. And so I find myself like channeling my inner Aaron when I'm like looking through Instagram and I see someone like, I'm like, oh, they're jumping on their toes. I need something. <laughs> I love that. that. Okay, that makes me feel so much better because I'm like, okay, so I am growing in my ability to help like coach through things and not just that is so awesome. But yeah, so we, we use items in our home. And, you know, this week you've been able to drop off items that you feel like would be good for Callie to hit the next level. But a lot of it is just how do we use what we have in our home? Because that's what she sees every day. And I think that's one yes. tip I've learned is we've realized that Callie loves music. And so her piano and her xylophone, those are what encourage her. So when we're trying to do some hard work, we're going to put that item in front of her to get her to do the work. And then she forgets about that she's doing the work and she kind of gets lost in it. And the next, you know, she's sitting for five minutes, you know, this is like back in like November. And I love that we were able to kind of problem solve together with our nurses of like, okay, we see what her personality is like and this is how she gets encouraged. But you know, what's great too is that we are always like listening to her. So let's talk a little bit like about our, our session. So like I got the iPad here. We're looking at Callie and usually I feel like, do we start off with like, like harder things at first, simpler things, you know, kind of take me through like on your side of what the layout is. Yeah. So I typically like to have just that little brief check-in in the beginning. And that gives me all the information, right. Of how everything's going today. Is she feeling a little bit extra tired? Is she not feeling like she like ready to go? Right. And that's we gauge where we start. So if it's a day, that, you know, you guys are sharing that she's just doing all the things and is like got lots of energy, then I'll definitely stack the more challenging stuff in the beginning, knowing that, um, you know, we have this hour to go. If there um, are things that, you know, I know are going to be particularly challenging or something that might be challenging, just starting right off with, I might break it down and say, what are the pieces we need to get to that one skill and mm -hmm. kind of break it up and work on a few things so that by the end, let's put it all back together and give her just like this last little push. Like, what does it look like now that we've practiced the parts of it? Um, and so it's also helpful in that beginning too, to hear what worked these last couple of weeks and what did not work. And what did not work is always, always more important and more helpful to know that like, okay, let's get rid of that and let's stop going down that road. It's not helpful. Like, let's move on and go, let's find a new way. Um, but that's, you know, for most providers, I feel like that's kind of 
what we, I mean, everyone does it a little bit differently, but for, you know, for me personally, that's, I like to get all the information and then quickly I can, I mean, I have an idea of, of what the session might be like, but I learned very early on to like, be ready to throw it out the window and like not feel bad and not feel like I failed if like my plan doesn't happen because every family, every child, every situation is unique and it's different. So like, I love that you mentioned not only the flexibility of like scheduling and stuff like that, but just, I feel like that's so vital to working um, pro probably any field, but for me personally, that's, that's a big thing, right? It's just being able to say, okay, I've got backups for backups for backups. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel like what's great is like, I think sometimes for beforehand, like playtime to me was like, let's just throw something in front of her and let her play. And now yeah. playtime is a little bit more intentional and I kind of model it out of our session. So it's like, she just took a nap. She just woke up. I know I've got this hour. And these are some tips for all parents out there. You know, like, I think that we also have to take a step back and understand that you know, physical therapy can be for everybody. Like intentional play can be for everybody, for any kid that you don't have to have a syndrome of medical issues, but you can have intentional play from your parent standpoint with your child to help them hit the next milestone. And so that's why I've been kind of taken away from that. And so when she has that optimal time where I feel like we're gonna get some good work in, it's like, okay, what do I really wanna focus on with her today? And I really want her to sit, and now we've been making like standing and, and walking fun. And so we noticed that like, she loves when me and Rome are both there and we're clapping. And so what we've been working on now is like we said, taking steps and holding our hands, but also like the position of her body. So here I am kind of like realigning her, but she thinks mommy's just like tickling and having fun. Yes. You know? And then we turn into yeah. a game and now it's like, okay, walk to daddy. And I'm positioning her hips and daddy's over here like you got it come on and then we're smiling and clapping and so we're hands-on but we're making it fun and she doesn't know that she's actually getting in some work right now and so that's kind of what our play has turned into we don't just and I know like we have moments where you know she's just tired and hey you earned it here's your iPad here's your favorite show before we do that we're gonna put some work in and I think that's been one tip I'd have for other families just in general is to be a little bit more intentional with what you're trying to do and what toys you're getting um, and thinking about, okay, like here's the milestones for these next three months is like kids during this time are usually um, fine motor skills. Like they're learning how to stack her colors. So I'm going to get colorful toys that have music with it because I know she loves music. And as she's playing with it, I'm going to say, that's purple. Look at it, that's a purple and then sign purple. And I try to bring all of it together. So she's soaking up all of it and she doesn't even know. Um, so that's one thing I have to thank you for is like giving me that idea of, you know, therapy, the stigma behind it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with her. It means that we're just, she has a team of coaches that are helping her train and get to that milestone. And she's gonna get to it on her own timeline. And I've had to be patient and take a step back and realize that like, like you said, she's unique. Every family's unique and she's got her own obstacles, but she's going to get to it when she does. And we're going to praise her for it when she does. So I guess we're going to end it on what are some tips you have for parents kind of like battling that milestone stigma or just in this world of like physical therapy with their child? Yeah, I, I just uh, quickly want to also like just tell you like music to my ears listening to all of the things you've just said and that that play piece. Um, there's even research to back up your, you know, feelings and your thoughts that play is therapy. Yeah. And that that's one of my my secrets <laughs> as a PT is in watching what does a child enjoy? what gets them to like do something over and over again. And so letting them play and then making play therapeutic. Now I'm going to slip in and I'm going to make it a little bit challenging. And I know you're probably going to keep doing it because you really like this thing to happen, whether it's raising or it's mom, it's like, so that is just amazing. I I think play, I'm going to title this play is therapy. Let's, let's put yeah. that out there for everybody. Play is therapy. Yeah. So I love that, that being the, the tip you really want to share. And it's, yeah, just, ugh, it's amazing. Um, and, you know, I think when looking at milestones, I kind of think back to what you had said before, when you brought them up about, 
every family and every home and every situation being different and unique and individual. And that runs through every, every part of life, right? But especially where it can feel overwhelming, you can feel, you know, the guilt, you can feel stress, you can feel fear, all these things that are wrapped into, am I doing enough? What's, you know, what's the best way to do it? And, you know, in the that we live in where you have so much information coming at you, which is mm-hmm. great, right? It's great to have access to it, but having a balance of, you know, knowing that milestones are there and they were created and they're research backed for a reason to give, you know, give us this guide of where, you know, when a child is typically developing, this is usually what you see. And it's within this kind of time range, range right? Um, just real general. And so, you know, my advice to any family out there is that if you have a child that, you know, doesn't have a, a significant medical history, maybe doesn't have a diagnosis yet, that it's a way to kind of track, like, am I seeing what I think I should be seeing, you know, checking in with pediatrician, um, but just using it as a guide to say, okay, I'm getting close to the end of this age range and I'm not really seeing any of these things. And I tried a couple of things maybe I saw on, you know, Pinterest or like someone's, you know, YouTube channel and I'm not seeing it. And so that's where early intervention is. That's what we're here for is to help that first step of I'm not seeing this. I'm a little bit concerned come in, get an evaluation, get that information to say, okay, I've had, you know, this clinical judgment and like, here's what's happening. Um, and I think for families who do have, you know, a medical history or a confirmed diagnosis or, you know, an injury or whatever, whatever the, the cause for a known delay is, it kind of works the same, right? It's this guide mm-hmm. it to say, here's what we would typically see. And what early intervention does is provide that support to families and caregivers to help children narrow any gaps, you know, when looking at that typically developing um, kind of timeline, but that, you know, our, one of our main jobs, I feel, and then Kindering really, um, you know, has a core mission of, you know, meeting families and caregivers and children where they're at Mm. and helping to make that connection, whatever that looks like, whatever feels best for that family. Sometimes for families, because of their own, you know, lived experiences, having a struct, a much more structured and kind of like, we're hitting this, we're hitting this, that feels good for them. Mm-hmm. So we'll work in that realm, but it's just about kind of figuring out what's going to work best and how do I help you connect with not only, yeah, we're going to celebrate milestones. We're going to celebrate inch stones. We're celebrating yes. it because <laughs> You know, for some kiddos, you know, getting just even this one skill within this age range is like, oh my gosh, considering what they're working up against either, you know, structurally or like neurologically, you know, whatever, it's like, that is huge. And they work a million times harder than like another child would have had to do it. So guess what? Like we're in a party like crazy because this is amazing. Yes. Celebrate the small wins. They all matter. They all build up to a big win and they, yes. Yes. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We could, me and Erica chat for so much more. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much more to talk about, but I just appreciate you for being here, everyone for watching. I know questions came in and I was able to like to take them all in and kind of put together our, our outline of our conversation. But if anyone has other questions, drop them below and understand that you know, your child's unique. Every child has their own timeline celebrate those small wins, play as therapy. And if you enjoyed this conversation, like, subscribe, and let me know what else you want us to talk about moving forward. Erin, thank you so much. I appreciate you and all that you do for Callie. Like you are our village and we love you over here. And I, I'm so thankful for you. Oh, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this and letting me share all of this. And yeah, I could talk forever so <laughs> we both get right <laughs> yeah so I do want to just get a plug in that early intervention is available in every state no matter where you are if it's as simple as like wherever you are you can just google early intervention at your state and your location um, all children have access birth to three to those developmental evaluations um, and so just spreading that word that it's it's available and you don't have to have a referral 
um, you can connect directly to an early intervention agency or you can go to a pediatrician, but that's just key. know that because I was telling, asking people, you know, do you know what Berka three is? And they're like, ah, uh, I don't know. It's called this here in Tennessee. It's called, I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, it's just early intervention is the umbrella. And then every state calls it something different. And I was like, oh, that, I learned something new that day. So thank you for sharing that because I feel like, you know, some people will be watching and under, kind of think like, oh, we don't have those services. It's like, no, you do. And they're offered to you. So I appreciate that. And again, thank you everyone and bye.